There we go. We are live. It is Sunday, October the 20th, 2019. Ben here. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We have a special guest tonight, the one, the only, from Laguna Beach, California, folks, Sean Pierce Johnson. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, east to west representing simply the best, the guy who shreds the faces to shreds. Love What's it. going on, everybody? Love it. Oh, Love it. Oh, man. Man, we've Such got... A day a... I had to hand a little... Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> Usually it's tech more on Tuesday, uh, but hey, I know Sundays... Well, let's be honest. There is no real day of the week when you're a YouTuber. It's a seven-day-a-week thing. So any day could be tech yeah. more on Tuesday. Yeah. it's uh, Today's been kind of one of those days where it's like, you try your best to make stuff happen, and there's just roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. After we get done here, I'm going to have to reshoot a demo. So I'm on my phone right now because I've got cameras and lights and everything set up. So today's been nonstop, man. Today's been nonstop. Crazy, crazy. Well, let's see. Do some shout outs here in the chat. Oh. There's the beer burps already. Man, we're all we're live like a minute and a half, and I'm getting beer burps. Great. Jeez, I got to keep scrolling here. We got a bunch of savages in here is what we got. We've got Matt Barnhart first in the chat. We got some guy named Sean Pierce Johnson. I have no idea who that is. Likely a troll. Uh, Zach Thong, JP Page 2, our good friend Jay Steen, Bam Mozzie, Gussie Wells, Terry's GG and G, moderator to the stars, my good buddy and roadie Mark Taft, Will Varela, who had quite the day today. We have Mike Rohde. We've got Brack Stubblefield, who's lurking and working on during this one. Don't work too hard, Brack. Mike Rohde, Joe Hervey, 84. Get your medal on, Joe. Brian Landreth, good friend of both of our channels. Edwin Kane. Let's see. Scrolling, scrolling. Mark those images. Tune in from the West Coast, which is the best coast. Phil Mosley Music from Parts Unknown because he's a vampire. Dan in New Jersey. Whoops, scrolling ahead here. We got, yeah, there's my lovely sister, Amanda. I may have skipped some people. Sorry, folks. Metalhead Hippie. Randy Crooks, fellow Knuckleheads. That's right. Music Therapy Laz, who's always lurking. BC Rich 581. I think I saw soda and milk in here. There he is. See, I'm still scrolling. These guys were having, they wrote a book. Daniel Horsley, Janice, Han 36 Solo, David Ennis, the FBI. The FBI is always watching. And our good friend Aaron from Albus Band. How could I forget Aaron? Three hack amigos. Woo! That's right. Oh, Eddie Van Haskell. There you go. There's Amparella, Eddie. We know he loves Amparella. Aaron was asking, what's in your hand? Oh, Guitar Collector 12. Hey, Chris. Brian Bond. What do you got in your hand there? We were talking a bit about it off air. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, why? What? And how? Yesterday, I got to hang with the hum. Uh, they're going to be celebrating the release of their 300th episode uh, next month uh, here locally in Southern California. Got, got together, hung out, had some tacos, and uh, recorded some pop. Got talking a bit of Harley Benton's, and he uh, let me bring home his uh, Harley style and then the harley benton engines those the stainless steel Ooh. frets and all that good stuff because um, i've been trying to do some harley benton stuff for a while and uh been a little difficult to like touch with people there because i don't necessarily know who the right person to talk to is but uh just out of Morbid curiosity, like how can a 
fifty dollar guitar actually be good. Yeah. And surprise, these uh, these Gresh-looking humbuckers can can rock with the best of them. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I've not really spent much time with it. Um, definitely be demos coming up of both these guitars that are, you know, full-on and in-depth. But for now, I'm just kind of playing around, uh, trying to decompress after the... Uh, Technical difficulties in my demo shoot earlier today. Most likely uh, use it to compress after I uh, after I finish shooting that demo. So I'm enjoying it so far, though. I like the vibe of it. It's, it's very different. The only weird thing about it is that reverse headstock, like body, that heads, that body, that headstock. That's Love the it. only weird thing about. It. But uh, there, well, I wanted all the the so original carbon eaters. Did they have the reverse headstock? Dig. Did they? I think so. I don't remember, I only have a person, but they if they have a reverse headstock, that one that I saw did not have a reverse headstock. Hmm. I wonder where I'm getting that idea from. I don't know. Hey, Rob212, good to see you. Robbie Johnston, Fender. Dwight Bailey, Todd Flowers, Cousin Todd. Yes, Aaron was saying in the chat there, he and I did a thing today. We booked our NAM flights today, folks. Yay! So now I just need uh, to get, uh, what do I need to get? Oh, NAM passes, that's right. I got to hit up bike this week. Hey, there's Lawrence Petros. Six string Brian. A small matter. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're they're already like it's just a matter of sending over the the info to get them processed. So the availability of the NAM passes are there. I just have to remember to send over names and email addresses. Which I shall do tomorrow. And that will be compliments of our channel sponsor. Flipside Music, folks. Flipside-music.com. <laughs> With their impressive wall o pedals. I like pedals. <laughs> we do like pedals, yes. You and I, you know, we have a bit of a thing for them. Just a little bit. Oh. I have two new ones. I made nice. some trades with some other podcasts. I have this cool 8-bit fuzz that's like an old NES controller. Okay. Rad. I haven't played it yet, but they're like, yeah, I think you'll like it. So we'll see how that goes. And now, in addition to my position of an iPad, I have the Ibanez L Metal. Oh, nice. The metal pedal. It's more like a low gain rat pedal and less like a metal pedal. But okay. you know, there's just something. LA. Like, I don't know. Hmm. It was a possibility. And so I had to take that. I just, just couldn't. I couldn't say no. Okay. Yeah, but exactly. it sounds really good. Uh, Lawrence Petrol says. He Okay. Uh, Lawrence says he can't stay impromptu date night with his beautiful wife. Well, I get that. Have a great show, Sean. I've been eyeballing your PGM 301 on Reverb. Nice acts. Stay awesome, everyone. Have a good one, Lawrence. Mm. I am Metalhead Hippie wants to hear you. those pedals. And apparently we're getting a bit of buffering on your end. What's that? I don't know. Oh, well. Yeah, it I'm happens. Buffering. 
buffering a little bit. I don't, I don't know. This is all new to me, people. <laughs> Usually it's my all live good. stream setup is way more like in tune than this, but I had a recent technical difficulty with my computer screen breaking down with my webcam built in that I always use for my live streams. That decided to take a crap. Uh, so now it's just a uh, normal HD TV for all the monitoring. So, you know, from here, you know, these channels yeah. are an ever process. We can, we don't necessarily have every percent all the time. Exactly. We do our best. Which I do have some news on that regarding my channel. Ah, in the next few weeks, I will no longer be on DSL. I should have a fiber optic connection. Yay! I like fiber optic. Yeah. Well, it beats DSL. You know, I'd like to at least step Actually, into, you know, the 2000s. Dick. Nice. I do... I bring issue that people are talking about. There is something going on, but I have no idea what. Oh well. Yep. Such as the. That's right, folks. Moving on up. No more Canadian internet. Moving well, just it happened. They ran the fiber. They had two sides of the highway to run it down, and it looks like it's running right by my place because uh, Amanda's uh, boyfriend noticed it yesterday. He's like, "I'm pretty sure that's fiber optic right there," and I'm like, "Yes." A one gigabyte connection instead of five meg down, one meg up. <laughs> oh yeah. Ooh. We actually we just, have a a few weeks ago. They uh, they started digging up, whole, and I think they're laying fiber optic line. Oh, it was the worst. They're here early, and of course, on a day that I'm supposed to shoot like a round of three or four videos, so. I'm certain that in the vocal mic for those videos, there's a, at least like jackhammer going every of so often. If a jackhammer acts in a neighborhood with no one around to hear it, does it make a sound at all? <laughs> Somebody who's home with a microphone might. Let's exactly. Oh. It'll be it'll be fun. It's actually good because it'll twenty minute video that much easier. Damn, music therapy Les, uh, with the super chat. Uh, shout out to my friend Ray Montano. He played congas for Santana back in the day. He passed away at the age of seventy nine, driving home from his funeral. Now, I am sorry for your loss, Les. And yes, a shout out to Ray Montano. And we had a pedal question. I, I did get a comment from last. Yes. 79, dang. I did want to, I did get uh, Laz's comment from uh, my stream on Thursday where he was driving down, Laz. I heard, I saw that. I, it's weird to, you know, have, lose your friends, but, but, you know, hopefully he's doing well. A little bit of time, but. Everything will be better, and I hope playing for Santana, the dude probably lived a pretty full life, so that's pretty awesome. I agree. I agree. Uh, Mark So's Images is looking at the Nobles ODR One or Mini pedal. Any opinions on them? I've just seen Phil X and Tim Pierce using it. I'm not familiar with that one. Have you had any experience, Sean? What was it again? The Nobles ODR1 or mini pedal, it says. I can't. Oh, yeah, I, I've played an older ODR1. Uh, there's, I think, versions of the one that I played silver enclosure as opposed to a green enclosure. But that's one of those, those over drive pedals cost certainly uh it's a little bit more full range so it's distorted 
from time to time. But I played was really like kind of organic overdrive sound. It was really smooth. Um, I think it sounds better in the amps. So like your twins and whatnot. Um, I played it into the orange and it, it sounded pretty good. Um, I bypassed the orange preamp and plugged into my Carbon X1 preamp, which has much more of like a, a, a very pristine, clean sound. And it sounded really good through. I think I prefer it on the side of the drive. I, I don't like it too gained up. It has a nice color to it, really kind of overdrive tone great with like fattening up stratocaster single coils mm -hmm. um, it was for a while a really related pedal that had to do with just the fact that you really the company nobles in general wasn't really doing much there for, for a while i have a few newer pedals like maybe 10 years i seem to remember them having some uh, but over the course of the last few years, they one like a mini pedal version. I'm interested in trying. I, I have not played one yet, but uh, uh, yeah, the opportunity to have the opportunity to one, I would highly recommend. It's a very it's a very different kind of over 100%. It doesn't do that. It's also not 100% like a full range portion kind of thing. So it's kind of in, so if you want something a little bit of color and a little bit of grit to your set, that you can bake like a an SRV kind of tone. It'll give you just that little bit of added oh, your sound to just really it's a great vibe to, to play it just feels good so okay but uh, the memory of it is <laughs> fresh and it's like oh i wish i, I wish i still had it around because i i'd probably be using it right uh hey to my buddy steve anderson glad you got that oh. eddie card yeah my knees hurt hello george lackey hello Brian Landreth got the new Love Pedal Black Face Deluxe. Loves it. Nice. Very cool. Craig I haven't picked up anything in the last week or two. I've been packing up gear. The original are definitely flimsy pedals. As that was one of the things about it that I the one that I played, it was like, looked like if I touched it wrong, it would fall apart, but God, did it sound good. Hey, we got 44 people watching. That's pretty good. Yeah, not too shabby. Too shabby. Uh, the move night. should be in the next couple of weeks, Edwin. Next couple of weeks, we got the electrician going in tomorrow, do some work, and then I've got a bit of stuff to do before I start moving in. But hopefully, uh, I'm looking to move my stuff in right away and start setting up the studio. So there may be a little downtime on the channel during the move, but hopefully not too much, folks. It's been so long since we talked. I didn't realize you were. Uh, it, it was a fairly quick thing. Uh, basically, the developer that's building the subdivision right next to us made us an offer we couldn't refuse, as they say, because we've got a couple acres of land here. So it went fast, fast sale. We found a place quick. And uh, yeah, we just uh, got the keys on Friday. Nice. That's got to feel good. It does, yeah. 
Moving closer to my sister, which will be nice. Jess. Basically one town to the east. All chaps are assless, Aaron. I always tell you that. All chaps are assless. And they're crutchless, too. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Craig. Appreciate it. Oh, man. That's... Thanks, Gussie. Appreciate it. Question is, under those, or are you gonna never be like Quentin and not wear pants? <laughs> yeah, strategically place Telecaster. Amanda has an open invite on the channel. Soda and milk. Whenever she wants to do a show, you know, she just has to reach out. Because we do get more views when she's on. Let's be honest. Uh, Joe Hervey's asking, anybody got the hybrid T6505 that only has the single tone knob? I do not. I haven't played one. Yeah, the I don't know if I've got one. I've definitely got a 505. Don't mind trying to keep tabs on something here. Fair enough. Uh, Will, I'm moving east, actually. About uh, 20 minutes east. Oh, we got 42 people watching here. Okay, and Joe's saying you can pick them up I, for about 85 bucks. Listen use. back through this. I, I hear you more clearly than. <laughs> Can All right. Come on. Keep those questions coming. Yeah, east, Will. <laughs> that way. Because <laughs> I'm facing south. Now I have REM going through my head. Uh, Daniel Horsley is asking, anyone in the chat have much experience with the Boss Katana? I ordered the 50-watt combo today. I don't own any solid-state amps, just hoping for a reliable backup to my tube amps. Well, they are reliable, I will say that. I actually have that exact combo. That's, that's the one that I won last year at the amp show. And I haven't done nearly as many with it. I use it just pretty much as a pedal platform amplifier, but it it performs better as a pedal platform than about 90% of the amps I've played last year. It, it's lightweight. The clean tone sounds great. You can crunch it up a little bit and just so that you, you can really dig in and get something really nice and and, and Gushy, um, um, love the Katana 50. I think I can feel the need to use the editor software to the people's patches or the further editing. Just love, I don't need to do that. Uh, the demo that I'm recording today, I'm actually running it in, in my rock, rocker verb. So kind of like, a really warm, buttery, clean tone from the rocker verb. And then I set the katana up to be more of like your scooped mid uh, fender sound. Two amps to get levels matched up in the mix. It sounds really good. Um, the thing I found that really ties the together pedals that I played that I feel like really make that combo come together well. Oh, um, the EB10, which used to be a DEF CON, uh, kind of like tone of the two amplifiers and just 
kind of is like that say like in the studio like there's certain pieces of equipment that just glue the mix together that's exactly how about that and then today during the video that i was filming the uh, horseman the little mini running that with just no gain at all just using it as a like a unity gain using the treble control extra sparkle before it hits the front end of the amplifiers it, it's really really good mm -hmm. very nice early okay run stereo but right that combination together was just pure magic nice very so, cool highly recommend uh yes uh, somebody asked if our, our friend of the channel, Absolute Mayhem, has a katana. Yes. It's either the 50 or the 100 combo. I can't remember which. Spent a little time over here, and I was like, you know what? To make a demo of a boss katana is going to take me ages, so I just went live for an hour and noodled with it. <laughs> really, Metalhead Hippie? Well, you know, this isn't your father's channel, so there you go, Metalhead Hippie. I'll take five bucks. <laughs> I've done worse for less. <laughs> and good to know, Brian Landris says uh, you need to break in the speakers. Thanks, Will. You do need to break it, it a little bit. Yeah. Again, sorry, folks. I, I, I see a lot of uh, uh, about the, the buffer here. We're, we're, we're doing the best that we can, guys. Yeah. Sorry, folks. It, in this time of year, too, you get some weird stuff happening. Thank you, Metalhead Hippie. I earned that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thanks, FBI. Could try that. Do you want to try jumping out and jumping back in again? Sean Headroom, that's... Let me try jumping out for a minute and I'll jump back in. Give me a sec. Sure. Appreciate it, Metalhead Hippie. And yes, you know, try playing in punk rock bands, folks. <laughs> you know, when you play a set and your cut is five bucks. You know, well, that bought the first beer I drank during load in. Hey, Mayhem, we were just talking about you, uh, that you have a katana. Uh, I couldn't smash a guitar, FBI. No new gear at this time, soda and milk. The last thing I want to do is get a new piece of gear right now because that's just another piece of gear I got to move. As soon as I move, then we'll have our eyes on some gear. Once we have NAM totally covered. Unfortunately, the flights went up for all the NAM time flights went up. Uh, we didn't get a chance to book a few weeks ago and they went up by about 50 60 bucks or something like that so i was like well there's a night of drinking gone a moving vlog technically yes todd technically <laughs> definitely wasn't a living wage that's for sure i did not sell that soda it is currently packed away most of the my guitars are already packed because the music gear is going to be the first thing to come uh, in the move. Speaker cab, well, do a little bit of painting, then speaker cabs. Boom! Let's try this again, huh? See if it works. 
hope so. I like that people say I'm Max Headroom. That's yeah, that, funny. that does seem to be better now. All right, awesome. Good. God, that was weird. Technical difficulties, hazard of the job. Hashtag deal with it. Mayhem says, we need to do something special when it's your last video from this studio. Sure, we can do that. And Drill Sergeant, you can stick around if you keep it guitar-related, please. Seems like my moderators are busy tonight. Did I say hey to Crowbar? Hey to Crowbar. Uh, let's see. Oh, Justin Cox says I'd rather take an ass kicking than move. Yeah, no kidding. Dress up the amp for the last show, please. Well, we can try doing that. Uh, Joe Hervey, I recommend you get a Vox AC10. I know you were looking at Vox amps. You mentioned that in a chat I saw earlier today, I think. So why don't we, uh, well, you did talk a little bit about that other guitar, the prestige style guitar. You said those things are retailing for like 350. Okay, now, <laughs> uh, did I surmise that it was asked about this? Yes. Yeah, it is a Harley Benton. It's one of the fusions with the Floyd Rose. It's, uh, again, it's another one that Ryan from 60 Cycle Hum let me borrow. So um, it sounds pretty cool. It's pretty good. Um, it is like a a shredder that doesn't feel like a shredder guitar. Like the neck is way more rounded than I would answer. That's meant for fast playing. Should be. Um, it's not quite as flat. Fingerboard feels decently flat. Um, it is a real Floyd, or at least it's a Floyd One Thousand series. I think the, uh, I think the licensed Floyds are are no longer a thing. I don't really know. It yeah, I, I don't recall seeing them lately. Yeah. yeah. Ross, that's pretty good. Actually, uh, yeah. I actually like the split coil sound. Yeah, it's kind of got a very nice. And hello to Fruitcake Tony and our good friend of the channel, uh, Rob from Tessie Switch. Hello, buddy. Remember, when you shop at tessieswitch.com, use coupon code Canucks and save 15%. Good to know, Laz. Yeah, my stuff's going to be moved by me and Mark in the chat here. Myself and my roadie. I don't trust my gear to anybody. And I think Amanda may also do uh, give me a hand in some of the design work in the new space.
Hey, Gary Tholander. Um, Harhai hates being sick. Well, if you are sick, I hope you feel better soon, buddy. We love having you around. Yeah. Nothing worse than being sick. Uh, Joe Hervey, uh, he asked Question. if anyone has the Vox AC-10. The last two demos that I put out, uh, guitar demos that I shot at Arden, I used a Vox AC-10 in those videos. For sure, Laz. We're still kind of out in the country, which is nice. We're outside of town, which helps. I may have a new truck if you need more movers. Looking at one tomorrow, Mayhem says. Well, good to know. That's when the community reaches out, Sean, when they're also offering to help move. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, a 63 Gibson amp. Nice. Yeah, pretty much BC Rich 581. You're right. Uh, yes, Tom Harhai, we're allowed four, I believe. Thanks, Joe. Uh, what else we got going here? Are you still getting audio, Sean? I'm not sure if Sean can hear us. The original yeah, Paramutant, hello? Uh, okay. Trouble. I think, uh, It's like, I, I may understand what you say if I listen coming from the feed on YouTube, because I have the chat pulled up on the desktop behind me so that I can see what people are asking. But uh, it's 15 seconds latent. <laughs> right. But it's the only, like right now, I, it's hard to make out what you're saying a little bit. It was easier for a while when I, I jumped out and jumped back in, but then it went right back to her. Gotcha. Oh, well. We do what we can do. Nothing more, nothing less. <laughs> Carbonite modem. Thanks, Justin. He likes my Fender amp. Nothing I like my Fender amp. Nothing. Uh, let's see Someone here. Lindo needs to fix it. What? Go ahead. What Fender do you have? Uh, the Blues Deluxe in Tweed. Okay. All right. And you, you managed to get a tweed one, the ones that I like to look at them the best. Yeah. Anything but black Tolex these days. Well, it it's such a good pedal platform, you know, headroom for days. Hey, we got Nerd Halen in the chat. Hello, Caleb. Good to see you, Gunslinger. <laughs> BC Rich, I, I did that. Uh, made a Night train clone. I played the night trains years ago, and those were pretty good. But I didn't know Bulgaria. Hmm. 
Yeah. Hello Last to Mark Taylor. What my name? Um, yes. Last, I will tell you this: my my ends for Nam are currently in development and under wraps. So, I I'm still conceptualizing what I'm going to do, but it's going to be very different from how I've done Nam in the past few years. I kind of this last year doing it just. It felt like way too mundane and through the motion. So I want to try something a little bit different this year to make it a little bit more fun, not just for myself, but for the companies. I want it to be something also that it's going to be something that you guys will enjoy watching. And it's not going to, it's going to be a lot more fun to watch. Provided that that everything works out, I feel like it's going to be a lot more fun for me to, for you guys to watch. So, fingers crossed. We'll see what happens. But I will exactly. be... That's a given. Yeah. Yeah. Guaranteed, we're going to meet up, whether it's at the NAM show, outside of the NAM show. Um, yeah. The big thing, have fun. You know, like... Don't go and work work yourself to death or anything, you know? Yeah. I'm hoping that this year, I hope this year at NAM we'll see us that were hinted at last year that I have I have some feeling things that what we're going to necessarily a whole lot of new like we'll see so but I'm starting to sense this trend with companies where they're kind of just like like you know we've got our down we can do rollout releases not at NAM so I kind of feel mm -hmm. like over the course of the NAM isn't necessarily like the off necessarily where you know if you get it down to what it really is and it, it's a trade show you know they're going to try to do business with you and it's going to be give me something where they showcase their, I mean, with electro harmonics it was just week that they announced the big muff reissue um, a month ago mm -hmm. or so ago, JHS announced the cheese ball. That wasn't a damn release. Releases. Everybody still wants Terraform, uh, which, spoiler alerts, I have seen in person, in the wild, held in my hand. So yes, people, for those of you anticipating it, it is coming. And I have, and it's all. But yeah, I don't necessarily feel free company to be using their best, brightest, and, and newest in the course of the coming years. I feel like we're going to see, we're just going to see stuff coming out all year long. And I think that that's actually going to make, I think it's going to actually make things for like what we do doing YouTube videos. I think that's going to make keeping and having a channel a lot more. Because there's this weird sort of ebb and flow to the way that the, the gear business works where you have, it starts in January with NAM, big buzz, and all this content comes out with new gear from NAM. That's like, that's hot for like about two weeks after NAM. Once you get inside that three week period after NAM, complete dropout. Yeah, and don't necessarily have a whole lot of like new to be able to. The it, it, the acronym is really true. Not available, maybe May. It's really tr it's really true. Oh yeah, isn't going to start late into the spring. So 
if this is the way that the industry is shifting like it is, it's going to make for us to be able to make exciting, relevant content with gear that you guys want to hear and that you guys want to see. It's going to be a lot easier to get it done and, and to maintain this stream of, of stuff that you guys want. Um, Ben's as knowledgeable as I am about the fact that to do this takes a, a lot of consistency and a lot of effort to stay dedicated to that schedule. And even for me, like just having one regular pedal demo a week for almost 52 weeks a year, it gets really difficult at times because companies want to push what's new, not necessarily what's old. And you come across the rare instance where a company will want to do uh, stuff that's old been really lucky this that I've reached out to for the first time videos with them they've been very receptive and they've been very into the idea of reintroducing products that may have already been introduced a year or two three years ago but using my videos as a way to break into a new audience maybe find a new audience and a new type of player so that's part of that's part of the the challenge with what we do is to always have something to do and i feel that as the industry shifts focus to just putting stuff out it's going to be a lot more fun because one month we have one new thing next month there might be two next month there might be another company putting out a new release so be a lot of buzz and, and just good vibes are all around so yeah that, that's kind of what i'm looking forward to is when maybe went to the point when we won't be seeing people walking around with shoulder camera rigs at the nam show anymore because that's just way too much yeah i agree i agree that's why you know i keep it simple just shoot stuff yeah. in 4k just on your phone and you're good to go Yeah, the phone is exactly how I got started with it. it. was just, I had my buddy with me. We took my iPhone and I was just like, if anything was cool, we just sat in the booth and made it happen. Yep. Ugh. Did you see the guys with the shoulder camera rigs at NAMM last year? Shoulder rigs, tripods, boom mics. On stable Yeah, and you can't even move by Saturday. Yeah. Newsflash, guys. If you want to do NAM content, it doesn't take that much. I actually think my favorite NAM stuff that I saw last year was the guys from that pedal show weren't even really planning on going to NAM, And so they decided to go. And all they did was just, like, Instagram stuff. And that ended up being better than a lot of the stuff that I saw from the show floor. Because it was just like, yeah, we're just kind of having fun. Like, do, talking to people, doing our thing. Boom, here's 60 seconds of us at this one pedal company just vibing on what they do. Yep. And then do the one vlog so, video documenting your entire trip. inspiration for me. Yeah, exactly. The Nam the Nam clock news. Yep. I like the Nam yep. clock news. Yeah, because uh, it's funny. Uh, JJ and I made it into one of the clips, and all it is is JJ calling him out saying, You said you weren't going to be here, and here you are. We're still keeping up with technology here. Yeah. Yeah. If you can persevere for another 10, 15 minutes, folks, we'll go, we'll do an hour tonight. 
Because I also have freight trains running back and forth. I'm hearing constantly outside, and it's bugging the hell out of me. And everyone's and everyone's commenting on the train. Yeah. Freight freight trains like sound is. Yep. Wow. Yep. Not gonna miss that when trying to shoot video. Yeah, I thought I heard something, but I wasn't sure what it was. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, uh, definitely not. So I, I actually will ask you a question since we've been talking about Nam for uh for oh the last little bit uh, what's mm -hmm. something that what's something that you're hoping we will find out or something that uh you're excited to see an evolution of this year hmm well in the mod in the uh in the uh, what do we call it? The modeling world, the new generation Katana, I think is coming, and the new generation Yamaha, I'm curious to check out, uh, as well as, fortunately, our pedal guys always bring some new cool stuff to each trade show. So pedals, surprise me with a new pedal, folks. Well, I will say this. I played the brand new Yamaha THRs at the LA Amp Show last weekend. And those were amongst my favorite things at the Amp Show. Like the thing, just sitting on a table filled an entire room. And it sounded really good, felt really good. And just having built in Line 6 wireless thing was so like no cable necessary you plug the transmitter into the thr to charge the battery i got it i got so the guy yamaha so hoping that I, I can do some sort of content related to it because legitimately it was one of the things that excited me the most uh it's just yamaha since they got line six uh now owning ampeg um, their, their guitar have never been stronger and they, they haven't been, in my opinion, as far as guitar go, in quite some time. Like, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of really good stuff from, um, the, the new Mark II Katanas are starting to ship. So you'll probably see those at, um, dealers pretty soon, but yeah, yeah we talked about the katana 50 earlier uh hanging out with uh the guys from 60 cycle hum yesterday they have two of the new katanas um and they sound just as good as the original katanas um yeah i i would see a fair amount of stuff from the bigger companies that will we're fine only going to enter an age where the big gear companies are actually going to be consistently putting out great product we're not going to yeah. have years where uh where one large company is going to have a great showing one year and going the next and then they it might be years before they have another good year i feel like now i think 2008's all in the states when really worldwide really taught corporations that you are not too big to fail you can fail if you don't do the right thing and i feel the industry from that because in the last few months is cranking out products that are just as good if not better than half the other stuff that comes out yamaha has become relevant to guitar players again with very um, and you know for all intents and purposes the fact that yes gibson did file for bankruptcy but they were rescued by the bankruptcy court i know people have their feelings about play authentic which is 
totally un I, I don't think that's the right way to go either. But you can't discount the fact that their NAM showing this past year was a total return to form. And listening and, and talking to people that I know and listening to come, they're they're ready to leave the past in the past and they're ready mm -hmm. to move forward. I'm hoping yep. that uh, Fender will do something to excite me just a little bit more than they did this past year. Um, doesn't mean digitally modeling a, a twin reverb, but that's another thing entirely. Uh, you know, I'm hope that you know we're gonna see that. As I said with with Brown, I want to see the big corporations do judge show. It's because the little always kill. It's like uh, seamless audio since I got the first first pedal from them like three it's just astronomical like make a product that is so adventurous and, and everything sounds so good it's it's so fun and to know them personally and to have a, a close relationship you, you just can't help for them they're your buddies that are doing well and, and they're all community building which i really love right and now i have aircraft going overhead Nice. Oh. Planes, yeah. trains, and automobiles. There you go. Yep, exactly, exactly. And my new place is on the other side of the military base and still on the flight line. So, yay me. Oh, uh, well, at least it's that'll. That's to your video yes yeah i'm joking of course <laughs> yeah oh they're just dropping off more pedals that's all it is <laughs> oh boy there very you go. nice Pedal well, air drop. we are yeah we are coming up on the uh hour mark my good friend um uh, if anybody that's watching isn't already subscribed to Sean Pierce Johnson, please subscribe. Um, do you have anything to add, my good friend? Other than I can't wait to see you in about 14 weeks. I am looking forward to it. Man. We can uh, hope that we can get together and be able to do something with you guys and have you on the channel because me here on yours you've had me here a couple times so hopefully next time we get together on your channel technical difficulties will not be existent people thank you for uh putting up with us uh in a technical difficulty today it was a uh, quite a trying day but you know the fact that you guys have stuck around with us for this long is really awesome um yeah i'm looking forward to it it'll be great I'm looking forward to this year's NAM actually having, I hope, Coombs, Mr. Aaron will be involved in that fun. I fully agree. I fully agree. And again, anybody, uh, if you're new to this channel as well, please subscribe. If you're not familiar with Sean's work, definitely check it out. He does great demos. Stompbox Saturday has become an institution. Um, what else we got going on tomorrow night is Canucks with guitars here at 8 p.m. Eastern 5 p.m. Pacific and one week from tonight we have Gabor coming on from the super awesome happy time pedal show hour thing the real long name I'll have it written down folks so one week from tonight is definitely uh, gonna be another fun one more pedal talk you know, I want to definitely thank Sean for joining me. Always a great time hanging out with you, buddy. And uh, as I always say, folks, hold those doors open. Just for you, Metalhead Hippie, one more pinch. There you go. Uh, let that guy ahead of you in traffic. Do good things, and good things will happen to you. Karma's real. We're living the dream. And we'll see you tomorrow night, folks. Rock on.